Hi gamers and welcome to one of these few videos that I present a whole collection for a specific platform. And uh, this time I have finished my 64DD collection. The 64DD was of course the very ill-fated add-on for the Nintendo 64. It was uh, eventually released after numerous releases only in Japan and it didn't really catch on. As you can see, here is the whole library for the machine. 10 games. Uh, but it's, uh, that doesn't mean that collecting it uh, fully was an easy job. Uh, there are a couple of quite pricey games included here, although most of the games here are quite um, common easy to pick up with the machine, uh, even though the machine itself is uh, somewhat pricey, especially these days. But uh, yeah, I, I do like the machine. It definitely had uh, a lot of uh, promise and uh, lots of untapped uh, potential. The games came on these uh, discs, as the name would suggest, a 64DD or disk drive. And uh, yeah, kind of like old floppy disks, but uh, a lot thicker. And uh, you could uh, read and write to onto these disks. So that was the main selling point of the 64DD, in that you could uh, you know save uh, straight on the cart uh, big uh, creations you did in Mario uh, uh, artist games or uh, in Doshin the Giant games. So you could save the um, state that the game world was left and uh, uh, stuff like that. So it definitely had something over the regular uh, consoles, uh, CD-based consoles that uh, you couldn't write onto the disc, of course. And, uh, well, uh, battery backup in cartridge-based games was uh, also not up to scratch when you compare it to the 64DD. And uh, this was also a, a cheap way for Nintendo to create bigger games these were uh, uh, multiple times bigger than uh, cartridge-based uh, games, these uh, inexpensive carts. And uh, so that was, of course, one of the bigger reasons that Nintendo wanted to make this. But uh, it was not to be. It didn't really catch on, even in Japan, where it came out uh, maybe too late in the console's lifespan. Uh, but uh, still, we got 10 games here, and I'm going to be talking a bit about each of them. First up, Doshin the Giant. Uh, if you wonder why that name is uh, a bit familiar, maybe, it's because uh, this was released on the GameCube. Uh, the <laughs> pictures here on the back don't really <laughs> uh, are not related to the game at all. Uh, this is the uh, god game that you control, a yellow giant. Give uh, orders to him and uh, try to make uh, the lives of the villagers, uh, islanders in the game world, uh, you know, try to make them happy by modifying the uh, environment, raising and lowering the uh, the uh, uh, ground and uh, picking up trees, making forests and uh, stuff like that. And uh, this is where the uh, writability on the disc came uh, came in, uh, you could really really do uh, the game remembered every little detail that you did in the game world. So that was a, a pretty pretty cool game at the time. And I, I've actually played this uh, completely through on the 64DD, even though this is a Japanese game. It's pretty easily playable with uh, just uh, uh, emoticons. Uh, you could uh, you don't really need any Japanese knowledge. But uh, yeah, if you're interested in a really quirky game, it was released on the uh, GameCube a generation later, with uh, lots of uh, uh, pretty uh, souped-up graphics as well. There was also a sequel, Doshin the Giant 2, I shall call it <laughs> now, because I can't really remember the whole uh, name. You can read it on your annotations now. 
this isn't really a full-blown sequel, this is uh, basically an add-on. Uh, add-ons were something that the 64DD was also uh, destined to have. Nintendo had big plans with a um, Super Mario 64 add-on and a Zelda 64 add-on, uh, which would uh, you, you would have the uh, game cartridge in the cartridge slot of the console and a disc in the disc slot of the 64DD, and they would uh, uh, open up new things in the uh, original game. Uh, you could uh, read from both of the mediums at once, making uh, the game bigger and, uh, 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 you know, you would have new, new secrets and newer areas to discover on your uh, regular uh, Zelda game, for example. But uh, this, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, most expensive 64DD by, uh, game by far. Uh, you can't get this uh, for for cheap, and it's really not worth the money. Uh, basically, you're just playing the uh, Doshin One and uh, unlocking uh, really crappy black and white movies in the Doshin Two uh, game, where you sort of um, uh, go around a Doshin themed uh, theme park and uh, you pee on stuff like signs and and uh, people and Doshin itself. Yeah, this is very Japanese and uh, it's uh, not, not worth your uh, money or your time, but of course I gotta have this for a full collection. Definitely the rarest game here. But then we have F-Zero X expansion kit. By far the biggest reason to own a 64DD. I really love um, F-Zero X on the Nintendo 64 and this is uh, more of the same and uh, really really great stuff added on top as well. This includes new tracks uh, so uh, if you just want to uh, want to play more F-Zero X you can with this but it al also includes a full-blown uh, level editor and uh, a ship editor and uh, you can do everything with this. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Nintendo included here the uh, same tool that they used uh, when making the tracks of F-Zero X. It's here on your disposal. And of course you can save uh, a large number of tracks here and uh, you can do everything. Everything that you see in the game you can do here uh, for yourself. So this is a really robust uh, piece of software. And uh, you could also create your own craft, uh, uh, you know, the pieces and the uh, parameters that the uh, craft have. So uh, you can make just the, uh, just the racer that you want. And this is a fantastic, fantastic game. Uh, well playable, even though you don't know Japanese, you just have to memorize a few, uh, few uh, parts of the m menus and then you can just go on create tracks. A must-have if you're an F-Zero fan and of course it's a must-have if you have a 64DD. Then we have a Japan Pro Golf Tour 64. It's just a golf game basically, nothing too special here. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken this is the only game that supported uh, online play on the 64DD. Yeah, the 64DD had its own modem and you could uh, log on to Randnet, which was uh, the uh, 64DD's own internet. And uh, you could play uh, an online game of uh, golf with this game. And uh, then we get to the Mario Artist series, another uh, pretty uh, unique game series that you could only experience on the 64DD. Of course these are related to Mario Paint that started on the Super Nintendo, but these take it uh, a whole level higher. Here we have a Mario Artist Paint Studio, where you can, like the name suggests, you can uh, draw and paint pictures. Lots of, uh, lots of uh, uh, options there. Uh, definitely more uh, more uh, varied than Mario Paint was. And here we have Mario Artist Polygon Studio, where you could uh, create your own uh, 3D objects. 
and uh, I've tinkered quite a bit with this uh, this piece of software creating like Triforce shape and I've even created a Master Sword um, came out pretty pretty nice and uh, of course you can um, color the objects as well and uh, these all the Mario Artist games uh, work in unison you can uh, swap assets uh, between two games for example you could draw a texture here on um, Paint Studio and uh, then by hot swapping the discs you could uh, uh, transport the texture to uh, Polygon Studio and then apply the texture to the uh, polygonal object that you were making so really really cool stuff and uh, actually what uh, also sets uh, Polygon Studio here apart from the other games is that this is the game that uh, predates WarioWare and uh, this uh, has basically identical micro games, games you play just a, a few seconds at a time and uh, try uh, in ever increasing speed try to keep up and uh, yeah the developers have, have said that Mario uh, WarioWare came directly from Mario Artist Polygon Studio and there are actually uh, I think like there are like a dozen micro games here so not not much vari uh, variation when compared to the WarioWare series but uh, pretty much all of the original uh, uh, micro games from this game have been included in the first WarioWare as well like the uh, swinging of the baseball bat uh, if you remember that micro game so a uh, uh, nice little piece of history here then we have Mario Artist uh, Talent Studio here you could put uh, everything uh, together. You could, uh, uh, you know, bring your own drawings uh, to this game and bring your own, uh, for example, like your own uh, uh, 3D characters into this game and make uh, movies and uh, you know little dioramas and uh, everything that you could imagine. There was also. Uh, uh, the uh, Mario Artist Talent Studio came with this special cartridge which includes inputs where you could input for example you know take uh, a cable from a VCR and uh, plug it here and you could see the picture that was on the uh, VCR VHS tape or directly from your TV uh, so you could uh, actually capture images from any any uh, appliance that you could plug in here and uh, this also came with a microphone. You could record record your own voice and uh, you know dub your own movies that you made here. Really, really stuff that uh, that was uh, you, you haven't uh, pretty much seen these uh, on consoles before or since. So Mario Artist series are quite uh, quite a cool cool series that Nintendo was really thinking outside of the box. And uh, there's also a fourth uh, Mario Artist here. This is the communication kit. Uh, basically, this is still sealed because you can't really do anything with this these days. Uh, this was uh, used when you want to upload your any of your uh, creations, uh, upload them uh, to. Uh, to, to the randnet where people people could uh, view them or download them for themselves and uh, this was just a communication uh, software and then we have SimCity 64 which was uh, uh, a full-blown SimCity game uh, this was in 3D though so that was something that uh, set this game apart and uh, you could actually uh, go uh, down to the street level and uh, you know view your city from down there and then this was something uh, something uh, quite special for SimCity at the time uh, before the games had been in just in 2D of course And finally, one final, piece of, one final piece of software, not really a, a game. This is just the Randnet software that you could go online and, uh, you know, send email to your 64DD buddies. <laughs> uh, so not really, you can't really use it these days at all, but uh, you could still uh, access it. And actually, uh, funny story, uh, the, mm, the uh, 64DD uh, email address that uh, the person who owned this game before me uh, had reserved is star wars at randnet uh, 
uh, and uh, that's that's pretty pretty funny. So I got in the Star Wars handle here. I wonder if that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, worth anything these days. <laughs> so that was my complete uh, 10 disc 64 DD collection. Uh, a quirky console uh, in many ways ahead of its time, but uh, it was really not meant to be. Finally, here are the peripherals that you could use with the 64DD. Here's the capture cartridge and the microphone that you could hook up to it as well. And uh, here's the modem. Not very fast. And uh, a mouse came with the Mario Artist uh, Paint Studio. And uh, you could also use this uh, on regular Nintendo 64 games, uh, but they couldn't really work properly, properly when uh, it wasn't designed for them. But for example, you could use this with uh, like StarCraft 64, uh, but you're missing some buttons that uh, a normal controller would have. And finally, here's also a, a, a Randnet DD uh, keyboard that you could write your emails faster and uh, more conveniently. This is the uh, rarest uh, peripheral for the 64DD by far. And with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.